is Selma Schimmel at ASCO 2011 in Chicago, and we're talking to physicians here about the latest research and clinical advances across many different cancer types. And now we're joined by one of the group room favorites, Dr. David Quinn, medical director, USC Norris Cancer Hospital, leader of the Developmental Therapeutics Program, and head of genitourinary oncology, all at USC where you're also uh, an associate professor, amongst other things, at the Keck School of Medicine. Thank you. And today, you're going to talk about all kinds of things as it relates to the prostate. So, Dr. Quinn, as with breast cancer, where I remember there was lots of research going on in looking at circulating tumor cells, now I'm reading about circulating tumor cells when it comes to prostate cancer. Correct. So I, I think we, we had some really interesting stuff generically on circulating tumor cells this year when a number of publications in breast and colon cancer came out in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. And uh, there was a very interesting accompanying editorial which uh, stated something like, not all circulating tumor cells are bad, not all circula circulating tumor cells are good, um, and implied that we have a lot to learn, and we do. What we know at this point, and what we're going to see from uh, Dr. Howard Scher's presentation, Dr. Scher's from Memorial St. Kettering in uh, New York, uh, he'll present some data uh, from the uh, Abiraterone 301 study. These are patients that went on to Abiraterone who'd previously had docetaxel chemotherapy. So at the time they went on, they were very late in their disease. The study showed a significant survival advantage for the administration of Abiraterone with prednisone compared to prednisone and led to the recent licensure of the drug by the FDA and we're now actually able to prescribe it. So we have many patients in the United States receiving the drug now. Now, the, the issue in this study was they collected circulating tumor cells before they treated the patients and at uh, se sequential times after treatment. The data will show that if you have an elevated circulating tumor cell, that's more than five in a, a blood sample taken before you start, that your prognosis is worse. So you have more, you don't do as well overall. The study will also show that your prognosis is improved if on abiraterone treatment, your cells fall below that level of five. And we have these data uh, or comparable data from a number of sets now, and uh, they are being uh, compiled uh, and put together so the FDA can look at them to see whether they're the sort of surrogate that we might use to help us manage prostate cancer. This could be a new biomarker. So uh, telling early whether you're responding to one of the chemotherapies or one of the hormonal therapies that we use in prostate cancer would be very worthwhile. And it would be nice if this were a universal surrogate. The problem is that we've used PSA to do this for some years and uh, the FDA has not accepted PSA uh, in the serum uh, or changes in PSA in the serum as a, a surrogate that we could use as a clinical trial indicator. And our hope is that a change in circulating tumor cells may uh, allow us to move towards that. What volume m before it's measurable in one's blood? Right, well it varies from cancer to cancer and from person to person. And that, it's actually a very good question. So we take seven and a half milliliters of blood. It's a, about a standard blood sample, uh, just from the vein, like when you're having a normal blood test, like a PSA test, in, 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 uh, which is usually done at the same time. We actually run this through a series of fairly complex filters. The later your disease, the more metastases you have. Generally, the more cells you'll have circulating in your blood that are distinct from blood cells. They have what we call epithelial characteristics. Uh, and these are picked up but, uh, by a variety of techniques. The one we have at the moment, which is uh, uh, run by a company called Veridex, which is part of a Johnson & Johnson uh, conglomeration, it detects epithelial cells uh, and counts them. But most of the patients that we look at who have metastatic disease actually don't have detectable cells. So it's not useful in everybody, and in fact, there's only a small number of patients that it might be useful in. Um, and if you start with an undetectable level, then uh, following 
uh, the circulating tumour cell levels is a questionable benefit and it obviously has, entails a cost. We know that in the studies done, a fall in circulating tumour cells uh, from above 5 to below seems to be important, uh, predicts survival. In terms of looking at an increase in cells, uh, whether that predicts survival, in other words, you need to switch therapy because this isn't working and you need to look at something else to try and control your cancer, we, we haven't quite reached that level yet. And the other issue about numbers is we're looking at relatively small numbers of cells in the blood. So you look at five, well, the relative number of blood sample uh, or blood, blood cells, red cells, white cells and platelets in that sample is going to number in the millions. So we're looking uh, at a level of uh, detection of like a needle in a haystack. It's clear that, that there are other cells there that are circulating from the tumour, uh, epithelial uh, cells uh, from what you'd think is the tumour itself, endothelial cells from the blood vessels in the tumour, and then some other cells that stick uh, epithelial cells and other cells uh, together called mesenchymal cells also circulate, what we call the circulating microenvironment. So what we're going to see in, in coming years, and we have a number of presentations here this year that are touching on this, uh, is a, a better way of looking at these circulating cells, this circulating microenvironment. And our hope is that as a research tool, that will allow us to evaluate the tumour without having to do a biopsy. In prostate cancer is usually in bone. That's not easy to do all the time. To teach us some things beyond just the numbers. And I think our sensitivity in counting the numbers will improve. And the Veridex assay um, hopefully will be improved. They've, they're partnering uh, with some people at Harvard, uh, and there are a number of other groups, including our group at USC, that are working hard on this to try and improve that technology. Thank you. Dr. Thank you. David Quinn, Medical Director, USC Norris Cancer Hospital, leader of the Developmental Therapeutics Program and head of Genito Urinary Oncology. Thank you so much. And best friend of the group room.